Dragon riding is one of the new features coming in Dragonflight, and with it, players will have access to a dragon riding talent tree in which they can spend points to enhance their dragon riding abilities in a variety of ways. In order to spend points in this tree, however, players need to first collect the dragon glyphs from around the four Dragon Isle zones. All of these glyphs are located in the sky, so you will need your dragon to be able to collect them. When you are near a glyph, you will see an emote pop up in your chat window to alert you that your dragon can sense a glyph nearby. Alternatively, you can use add-ons like Handy Notes to conveniently mark each glyph's location on your map. I will leave a link to the Handy Notes add-on as well as the Dragon Glyph plugin in the description below. This video will show you each Dragon Glyph location and how to reach them. Let's start with the Waking Shores. The Wingrest Embassy is one of the easiest glyphs to reach in the Waking Shores, and it appears early on in the levelling campaign. This glyph is much closer to the ground than many others, so you should be able to reach it by using your dragon's Skyward Ascent ability from the ground. Or, if you find yourself already flying close by, you will likely be high enough in the air to swoop down and collect it that way. The Dragon Heart Outpost is another fairly easy glyph to reach, and is a good glyph to collect next, straight after the Wingrest Embassy. The glyph is located inside the ruins of a tower, and there are large vines growing around the sides of it for you to land on afterwards. This allows you to regain your vigour while staying at a high elevation. The glyph at Scalecracker Keep will be difficult to reach for players early on unless they have collected other glyphs already as the glyph is located at the top of a very tall cliff, close to the Wingrest Embassy. You can reach this glyph without having spent any dragon glyphs already, but you will have to take breaks along the way up the mountain as you will inevitably run out of vigour. The next glyph is on top of the Lifebinders Conservatory. You can fly up to it and take a couple of breaks if you need to, as there are a few platforms available before you reach the top of the tower. Use the top floor of the conservatory as your final launch pad and use Skyward Ascent twice to reach the glyph. The next glyph is also at the top of a very tall tower, but there is another workaround here. The Skytop Observatory has a flight path you can learn, so it might be wise to wait to collect this glyph until you've reached this area during questing. Once there, it will take around three Skyward Ascents to reach the glyph. The Crumbling Life Archway is easy enough to reach as it's not too high off the ground, and this one is located directly beneath the top of the archway. You can fly through it from one side and come straight out the other. The glyph at the overflowing spring can be found right at the top of the highest cliff in the area. Once you're up in the springs, simply recharge your vigour if you need to, and use Skyward Ascent to get to the top of the cliff, and take a break there if you want to gather more glyphs straight afterwards, as your starting point is nice and high. The Obsidian Throne Glyph is a tricky one to reach as you need to make your way up the large mountain and then reach the glyph that's suspended above a pool of lava. There are very few safe spaces to land once you make it up to the summit, so try to identify a landing spot as quickly as possible in case you need one. My advice is to make your way up the mountain in two or three separate steps so that you don't expend all of your vigour at once and end up with nowhere to land. Once you're close enough, one or two Skyward Ascent casts should get you to the glyph. If you plan to collect more glyphs immediately afterwards, I would recommend waiting for your vigour to recharge as the Obsidian Throne is one of the tallest parts of the zone, so it provides an excellent launch pad for reaching the rest of the glyphs in the Waking Shores. The glyph at the Obsidian Bulwark is very easy to get to, especially if you came from the Obsidian Throne, but if you are trying to reach this glyph on foot, you should still be perfectly able to reach it with a few Skyward Ascent casts. The next glyph is definitely easiest to reach if you begin at a high altitude, as you will struggle to reach it in one go from ground level. The glyph itself is located at the peak of the tallest cliff in the Ruby Life Peaks, and provides an excellent landing spot once you've collected it. The final glyph of the Waking Shores is at the top of a small cliff in the Flash Frost Enclave. This is one of the final questing areas of the Waking Shores, and you can easily reach it by flying upwards from the quest hub, or, if you're already airborne, you will likely be high enough to reach it that way. Just be mindful of quest mobs in the area that you may aggro once you land. 
Moving on to the Onaran Plains, the cliff at Rasathar Reach is at the top of a tall cliff, and will be difficult to reach from ground level. There is a quest hub directly beneath this cliff which is a good starting point for reaching it. I flew onto the roof of one of the small spires nearby and used that as my launch pad to reach the glyph. The next glyph is great to reach from the previous glyph location as you'll be flying at high speed and regenerating vigour very quickly, allowing you to use more Skyward Ascent casts to reach Onara's Roost. The glyph is right at the top of the very tall statue of Onara, sitting on top of a cliff. If you are starting from ground level, you will need to cut this journey into a few steps so that you don't completely run out of vigour. The Onaran Plains is a fairly flat zone, so perching on top of the statue after you've got your glyph is a good idea if you wish to continue farming glyphs directly afterwards, as it can be hard to gain momentum in this zone. The Nokudan Hold Glyph is extremely easy to reach from the previous location, but if you are travelling on foot, you may need to scale the cliff in a couple of steps before you can reach the top and collect the glyph. If you start from the ground close to the base of the cliff and you have four available vigor charges, you will be able to reach it with four Skyward Ascent casts. The next glyph is located in the middle of a cliff above a small waterfall overlooking the Shady Sanctuary quest hub. Since you will be brought here while questing, it shouldn't be too hard to reach, especially if you start by the Flightmaster, as you will have very little distance to travel. The glyph at the Eternal Kurgans is located to the side of a fairly tall cliff, but you will be able to reach it from ground level with around three Skyward Ascents. You can also scale the side of the nearby cliff on foot if you need to get a higher elevation first. The next glyph is inside a dilapidated tower and is very easy to reach. There is a platform beneath the glyph for you to land on, which I would recommend you use as you can see the next glyph from that platform, and if you have enough vigour, you can reach it from there too. Three Skyward Ascent casts from the previous glyph location at Zaskaleth will get you to this glyph, but if you are starting on foot, I would recommend scaling the cliff in two separate intervals to reach it without using all of your vigour. You can also land on the cliffs nearby if you want to, to give yourself a better takeoff point for other glyphs in the zone, considering that the Onaran Plains is largely flat. The next glyph is hanging fairly high over the Oniri Springs, but, for once, it's not right at the top of the tallest cliff. Three Skyward Ascents should just about get you to the glyph if you are starting on ground level. The Windsong Rise glyph connects nicely to the Oniri Springs, as they are fairly close together, and Windsong Rise is easy to get to. Windsong Rise is also a major questing area of this zone, so while you are there, it will be very easy to pop up on the cliff where the glyph is located to collect it. Just watch where you land so you don't aggro unnecessary quest mobs. The final glyph of this zone is in the Dragon Springs Summit, and it's one of the trickiest ones to reach. The glyph is just under and to the side of a platform overhanging off of a cliff. Be careful of that platform, especially if you aren't max level yet, as there are elite mobs there. I managed to reach this glyph by starting at the previous glyph location, but just be mindful of your momentum and vigour, as this glyph requires you to fly upwards for the majority of the flight, from point A to point B. Moving into the Azure Span, the Fork River Crossing glyph is a nice freebie. You'll find it hovering over a path which you just need one Skyward Ascent to reach from the ground. Next, the Cobalt Assembly Glyph is hanging over the top of a tall tower, but you can land on one of the platforms connected to it to regain your Vigor Charges for your final push up to the top. The Fallen Course Glyph is nice and easy, especially if you start from the Cobalt Assembly, but even so, the Glyph is hanging very conveniently over a path so that you can easily reach it from the ground. The glyph at the Kalthraz Fortress is tricky, as it is hiding inside the broken roof of the building, which you can only see from one side, and is pretty much impossible to see from the ground. However, once you know where it is, it's very easy to get to. The next glyph is looming over the top of the main entrance to Vaxros Range. It's easy enough to reach from the ground, just be sure to fly over the top of the range, don't be tempted to fly through the tunnel as the glyph will be above you. Also, be mindful if you intend to land nearby as there are hostile level 65 mobs in the area. The Lost Ruins is a great next stop from the previous glyph as you will be able to fly to it from a higher altitude. Once again, 
The glyph is hiding at the top of a tall tower. It's the only tower of its kind in the area, so it's difficult to miss. The ruins of Karnthar are a short flight from the previous glyph location, and the glyph itself is once again hiding on the south side of the ruins, so you may not see it immediately. Try to either fly above the ruins so you can dive downwards, or curve around the ruins to reach the glyph. The glyph at Imbu is easy enough to fly to from the previous location, and can be found nestled among the side of the cliff. Just be quick once you've collected the glyph to find a spot to land that is still at a fairly high elevation, as you don't want to have to start your next journey from sea level. If you're starting from Imbu to get to Zelthrak Outpost, you may struggle as you need to do lots of flying up an incline, and you will struggle with your momentum. You'll likely need to take a break along the way, but the glyph itself is located towards the top of one of the trees. To avoid danger and give myself a good launch pad for the next glyph, I landed on a fallen tree to start out at a higher elevation. The Azure Archives glyph is tricky to do from ground level as it sits just off to the side of the highest platform in the archives, but it can easily be reached in stages. While questing in the area, you will be given a ride up to the top of the archives, giving you a much easier way of getting to the glyph. The next glyph is sitting above the trunk of a large chopped tree in Creektooth Den. The tree is larger than the rest in the area and has no branches, so you should be able to spot it easily. The final glyph is looming high above the Brackenhide Hollow. I reached this one easily by starting at the Creektooth Den glyph location, but you would also be able to reach it from the ground if you are already nearby. Just be careful of hostile knolls in the area if you are starting out on foot. Finally, we reach Thaldrassus, the final zone for dragon glyphs. If you're not already somewhere in the zone, I would recommend starting at the broken bridge that separates Thaldrassus from the Azure Span, starting with the Southhold Gate glyph, and then working your way around. The Southhold Gate glyph is up in the tower to the left of the bridge as you enter Thaldrassus. You should need roughly two or three Skyward Ascents to get yourself up there. The Storm Shroud Peak Glyph is extremely high up, so watch your vigour and take breaks if you need to. The glyph can be found at the peak of the tall cliff. Definitely try to land on the peak of this cliff afterwards if you plan on collecting more glyphs straight away. Next up, there is a Dragon Glyph in the Dragon Isle's capital city, Valdraken. Much like the previous glyph, this one is located at the top of the tallest spire in the city so having a takeoff point at a high elevation is extremely handy here for reaching it in one go. The Algathira glyph is sitting on the top of the tall tower, and is easily accessible if you start from Valdraken. Again, try to land somewhere close by that is high up to give you an extra boost in getting around the zone, as Thaldrassus is a very dynamic zone with lots of obstacles and areas at higher elevations. Algathar Academy is tricky because the glyph is hidden up in the ceiling of the tall tower, and you need a good amount of momentum to reach the tower to begin with, so you may find yourself flying rather fast when you get close. If you can manoeuvre quickly, you need to aim for the tower and curve your dragon upwards as soon as you're inside to get to the glyph. Otherwise, the easier option is to land on the platform in the tower and use one skyward ascent to reach the glyph. The glyph in the Veiled Oshery is in a similar looking tower to the Algathar Academy, but is easier to reach. If you're starting on foot, there is a flight point in the area from which you can start dragon riding, but you would need a good amount of Skyward Ascent casts to get yourself high enough to reach the top of the tower. To get to the Vault of the Incarnates glyph, I found it easiest to start at the Algathar Academy glyph location and fly from there. As you curve around the side of the Vault of the Incarnates, there will be a gap at the top of the cliff, and you should see the glyph suspended in that gap. This is one of the more dangerous glyphs to reach, and you would need plenty of vigour charges to keep yourself from falling. Also, be careful of the lava pools once you collect your glyph. Find a safe spot to land. The Thaldrassus Apex is by far the most difficult glyph to reach, as the mountain is absolutely enormous. Even with the maximum of 6 Vigor Charges, you will still have to take multiple breaks as you try to scale the mountain. There is no way to reach it on foot, and the apex towers over the rest of the zone, so there isn't really a good place to start your ascent, you just have to start somewhere. I wouldn't recommend trying to reach this glyph without the maximum Vigor Charges available, which is 6, 
as the whirling surge ability is great for giving you a boost of momentum, but it costs 3 vigour each time you use it, so you need plenty of vigour to spare. The Temporal Conflux is a direct nosedive downwards from the Thaldrassus Apex, but you should also be able to reach it from nearby if you are starting out on foot. The Glyph is up in a tower, which you can collect with one Skyward Ascent cast if you're already grounded up in the tower. The Glyph at the Passage of Time is located under an archway formed out of the nearby cliffs. If you are coming towards the Glyph from the air, be wary that it is much lower to the ground than you may expect. Between the Passage of Time and the Gelakir Overlook there is a viaduct. From there, you can simply jump down on your dragon and collect the Gelakir Overlook Glyph. You can also grab it easily from the ground with one Skyward Ascent cast. The final glyph is located on a floating rock just to the side of Tearhold. It's pretty easy to reach on foot, but just be mindful of hostile mobs in the area. And that is all of the dragon glyph locations in the Dragon Isles. With all of these collected, you will be able to completely fill out your dragon riding talent tree. Thank you very much for watching, best of luck finding all of your dragon glyphs, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!